The fixed miter saw is the easiest and safest of all of these saws to use. Well, that's because when you put a piece of wood in here and bring the blade down as it's spinning, it's going to push down on the top surface and back towards the fence. As it's spinning around here, you can see it just keeps that same action going down in. That means that your wood is literally held in place for you, particularly at 90 degrees. In fact, let's just see how easy it is to make this cut. I hold it here on the fence firmly, but not white knuckles. I'm not worrying about it. And look at even the scrap piece doesn't move. Everything's just staying right in place. Now, a couple of complications come if I try to cut around material, like cutting into a dowel. The reason being is as the teeth come down, the teeth actually want to cause this to turn around, and that can cause it to bite a larger bite than it should. You'll see this mostly when you use something like ABS drain pipe. This stuff can actually explode in the saw if you don't do it right. Because as you're cutting down, I've cut away a little bit here. Let me just show you. As we're getting down about down this far, all of a sudden, you see if this pipe rotates, you see how it's going to go right up into the space here between those two teeth. And suddenly, if it catches that much plastic, the whole thing's just going to blow apart and jump in your face. So, yes, you can cut pipe. You can cut aluminum pipe. You can cut extrusions and all of these things, but because they're not solid wood, you have to worry about the teeth binding. You really should be using special negative angle teeth, tooth blades. You can check the section in the DVD about specialty blades and you'll see what a dream it is to work with those. That's fine when your piece of wood is about the size of the bed of the saw, but we usually cut things that are a bit longer, like this. Don't tell me you've never done that. We do need supports out here, not only for safety, but for accuracy. Let me show you a couple of ways to do that. Now, a big board like that would have been a mess if it fell down. All you make is some sort of scrap wood support that's the right height for your saw, and the reason for the T on the end is that when you slide this way, it doesn't tip over or fall out. It's quick and dirty, it's on the floor, but that's often where we're working when we're working with these saws moving around a construction site. Let's take a look at just how we do it up on a table. Some saws have provisions for extending the table out like this. All of them have room to put in bars, which are sometimes sold as accessories, and sometimes come with it, and that'll usually double the size of the table. If you need it long, like the boards we were cutting on the floor, then what is really useful to do is grab a Workmate or some other surface like this. Nice thing about the Workmate with this clamp is I can just come out here and then move this up and down until I'm at the right height, no matter what the lay of the land might be, and that's going to hold it firmly into place on one or both sides. Now there are all kinds of commercial gadgets available, miter box stands with wheels to roll them around, but they all have extension wings so that you can work standing up and not have things falling down. It gives you more precision and a lot more safety. End stops can be very useful for doing repetitive cuts, but they can also be very dangerous. You see, here's the piece of wood that is cut through this end stop. And as I'm coming up, uh, look, see how it's catching there and binding? If that is allowed to bind between the blade and the stop, it not only messes up the cut, but can grab this piece and throw it right up into your face. So either you have to hold that firmly down or have a clamping arrangement anytime you're stuck between the block and the blade, or we change the game. We actually move this end stop over a little bit further so that we can put an insert of some sort in here. That's my real dimension that I want. I come up to the dimension and then I remove the spacer. That means that this piece is now free and not bound between the stop and the blade. I can hold it safely over on this side. And it just stays there without any danger. So end stops never allow the piece to be bound in unless it's clamped into place. Now I know that you don't all use safety glasses on every cut you make on a miter saw, although you should. But let me show you why when you're cutting small pieces, there's no exceptions. Right now, this saw is set up wide open to be able to do bevels from either side. So when we want to cut some smaller pieces, we have to close that fence in. Whatever the saw has available to close the gaps and make it a little bit tighter. 
Even here, we're left with a fairly large gap. Some of the saws can adjust down tighter than that. Let me just show you what happens when we either trim the end of a long board or we're trying to actually make small slices of something. Well, you see it started to happen right there. You see how this piece moved back into that slot. And if something had just moved wrong, it could have caught the blade and gone flying. And it happens all the time. So when you want both precision and safety, what we're going to do is close that gap. When your saw itself doesn't come close enough, then we take and use sacrificial fences. These fences can be added in temporarily or more permanently for our work. They can be screwed in from the backside. In this case, where I only need one side clear, I can actually clamp this thing right up on the top on this side, and that'll hold this one into place. This one is just to make everything parallel. It allows me to come back to make that same cut, but watch the difference this time. It fell off down here completely free and could not move back because you see the slice is there and it's set up now for making a whole series of multiple cuts with that same fence very, very safely. Same thing goes for the table in that the table on almost all these saws have an adjustable sacrificial insert that can be moved in and out and it should be made fairly tight alongside the blade. When you go to a bevel, it requires a larger space so you have to either move them out or leave it slightly larger. You want a really, really nice clean job? Well, what you'll do is something similar to what we just did on the fence, is you can take a piece that goes on and replaces the table, and then we're gonna be cutting right through that. And that way what happens is you've supported the backside, nothing falls down in, and you don't get any splintering on the piece you're working on. Sacrificial fences and tables for detailed work and safety when you're cutting small slices.